Hi, my name is Laura Ingwell and I'm an Extension Specialist in the Entomology Department at Purdue University. I'm here today in the Entomology Greenhouse to introduce you to composting with the insect, the black soldier fly. Black soldier flies, also called Hermetia elucens, are a species that is native to neotropical regions, but at this point are distributed globally throughout the world. The cool thing about this insect is that the adults are very short-lived, about six days. They don't bite, they don't sting, they don't transmit diseases. They're actually a very, very clumsy, sort of docile fly. And the important or the useful life stage of this fly is the immature or what we call the larval stages. And so this adult insect, like I said, is very short-lived, about six days but they will then deposit eggs during that six day time span and those eggs hatch into what we call as larvae or immature flies and they are detritivores and decomposers. So they will feed as they mature into adults on a variety of organic waste materials. And so today I want to share with you how we manage and maintain this insect as a tool to compost organic waste and potentially build soil health. So like I mentioned, we are inside of a greenhouse because unfortunately for us here in Indiana, this insect does not overwinter. Like I mentioned, it's native to the neotropics, so it prefers warmer temperatures. So between 20 to 40 degrees Celsius, which is around 75 to 100 Fahrenheit, is the ideal temperature for this insect. Its life stages can survive as low as 50 degrees Fahrenheit, but if we get below that, we see a lot of mortality. So to maintain this insect throughout the winter months, we keep it here in this heated greenhouse. The adults do fly, so in order to minimize or restrict their distribution in the greenhouse, we use a simple pop-up sort of tent greenhouse structure to maintain the adults. So as you can see here, we have a very large population of adult flies flying around inside of this screened structure that holds them together, confines them, and allows them to mate with one another. And within this structure, we have a bin, which we call an egg trap, that has decomposing material in it to help attract the flies and concentrate where they're going to lay their eggs. On top of that bin, we place boards or cardboard, corrugated cardboard pieces secured together with a binder clip. And this substrate is ideal for the flies to lay their eggs on because they like to stick their abdomen inside of these tight spaces near that decomposing material and lay their eggs. And then when it's time for us to come and harvest or collect the eggs, we can just take these boards apart and scrape the eggs off and add them into our compost bins. In this closed uh, facility, we rear them in very a series of very small bins so that we have about one gram of eggs in each container. And we will then feed that one gram of eggs a variety of organic waste until they reach the stage right before adults, which is called the pupil stage. And so um, what you can see here in these bins is a series of the different life stages. So as they transition through five larval instars, that takes about 18 days. So during that time, we are feeding them a variety of different organic wastes. Much of what we use is food waste that comes from dining halls on Purdue's campus, or coffee grounds, or just table scraps from um, members of our lab and people in our community. And so the eggs, like I said, we harvest them so we can scrape them off and put them into these bins. And when they're very little, we start out with a very fine, easily accessible food source for them to eat. And this is called Gainesville Diet. And that's where we put the eggs for the eggs to hatch. And once the eggs hatch, then we'll start to put more table scraps food inside of the bin. So this bin now has some corn tortillas added on top of the bin. 
And we want to be careful to feed just the right amount that they're eating without having a lot of standing food around. And that helps deter other insects and pests from colonizing your compost bin. So we have the very small, almost what we would call neonate and first instar larva in this bin. And as they grow through these larval stages and reach adulthood, that one gram of eggs can consume five kilograms of organic waste. And so they will just slowly get larger and larger. One of the most unique things about soldier flies compared to composting with, say, worms, is that you can add much more diverse foods or feedstocks into your compost bin. So for example, right here, we have a large piece of chicken that has some meat and the bone still on it, and the fly, the larva of the flies you can see are crawling around on top. But so the unique thing here is things like animal proteins, dairy, oils, and fats can go into this composting system, and those flies can consume that food and break that down in about 18 days. Um, they also will eat the traditional organic waste mm -hmm. that you would put in a compost bin like apples. So as they grow, they get larger and larger, and here you can see them congregating inside of this apple. These are the very late instar larva and the pre-pupa, which turn this very dark color. At this point, when the flies reach this age, that's when we stop feeding them because they're not going to be eating as much. And the cool thing about this insect is that once they're done eating and they're ready to turn into adults, they naturally want to move away from their food into dark, dry areas. So this is where if you have a compost bin at home and you add them, say, into your backyard compost bin, as they get old and mature, they'll leave that area and crawl away so you can harvest that compost out. If you're composting in a closed container, you can add a ramp as an exit for those pre-pupa to crawl out away from that food, and then you can easily harvest the compost. At that stage, if you're composting out in nature, they will find a safe place to emerge as adults. The adults will come out, mate, and lay eggs and be attracted back to that compost bin if you put fresh new organic material in it. Alternatively, you can harvest them at this stage and you can feed them to livestock or even pets. So chickens, pigs, fish, and even some things um, like geckos or bearded dragons that you may have as pets. Um, this insect is often found in pet stores as feed for them as well. So if you have a market or, or an animal to feed them to, you can harvest them and use them for their protein and their fat that they provide. And if you don't, you can just let them go in the wild. And during the summer months in Indiana, they'll continue to mate and reproduce. In the winter time, when the temperatures start to get below 50 degrees, that's when we have to move our colony back into the greenhouse to help it survive the winter. But you could put it in a protected garage, a barn, or something like that to try to help them overwinter. The key to composting with this insect is really managing and maintaining the amount of food you have in the bin. If you're wanting to harvest the compost that's created um, when the insects are done feeding. Ideally, at the time of harvest, you don't have a lot of undigested food, and what you really have is this really rich, granular frass or compost that they create, and then the larva themselves. The key there, then, is watching how much food you're putting in the bin and not adding more until those flies have broken it down and eaten through it. If you're composting outside, um, you will get other insects that will colonize that bin, things like sap beetles and other ground beetles and other flies. And so if you're feeding at a rate that the black soldier flies are consuming it, they outcompete those other insects. And so you have a, a fairly clean and tidy system. Um, if you have a lot of excess organic waste in there, then you'll have other insects joining in the process of breaking them down. Um, so that's kind of up to personal preference. But we really see the utility, and my lab has been working on how can we utilize this insect to divert organic waste from the landfill and transform it into something valuable. 
So we really see an application for adding these insects to composting on urban farms because you have access to a lot of organic waste material in your community and oftentimes you have to bring in organic soil amendments to help build healthy soil on that farm. So while these are very efficient in their composting, so like I mentioned that one gram of eggs will eat about five kilograms of organic matter, but that really only translates into 650 grams of compost. So a lot of that waste is being transformed into the insect itself, but you do still get a very rich in nutrient, very high in organic matter compost that you can add into the garden in as little as 21 days while they complete that egg hatching to pre-pupal stage. We've had a lot of fun learning from these insects and being able to utilize them to reduce the organic waste material headed to the landfill. And in one unique circumstance that's actually been through incorporating the ability to compost with soldier flies along with some of our educational um, conferences that we host. So for the last two years we've been collecting all of the food waste material and the compostable or biodegradable serving ware from the Indiana Small Farm Conference and bringing it back to our university and incorporating it into our Black Soldier Fly Colony composting along with the food waste that we collect from the dining courts. And so we've created a time lapse to show you what this process looks like of the soldier fly larva consuming food waste along with paper plates and napkins and paper cups that we have utilized um, to serve food at our educational events.